That's the control cable made. I'll unplug this for a minute. So we should be all right with that now. Stick the throttle back together. Just make sure it all works. That's that done. That should be okay now. I'm not going to put it back through that hole there because he might want to put Torah bars on. There's no point in me making it difficult for him. So I've got to figure out now whether these wires, it's a rather thick bit of stiff wire there. I'm just going to see if it will align with the dimples. It's a bit more difficult to do this side because you've got to obviously get the uh, the throttle together as well at the same time. Sometimes it might be prudent to just grind a little bit out of the out of the switch, but we'll see first. See how we get on with it. Yeah, it might be all right. Like I say, it's a bit of a tough thing to put together because it's all got to go at once. Make sure, first of all, that the nipple fits in okay. Yeah, perfect. So now let's work on getting the stay together.
do. cables through now.
as I thought. The wire is pulled off. To fiddle about with it. It's blowing the fuses so I can find out where it goes. No sign at all of where that solder was. No. Never mind. This is going to be tough.
Give it to me, come on. Okay, it's changed now, obviously, to a fixed camera. I think my fantastic Go Slow 6, the battery died or it, or the media got filled up or something, but um, obviously it's gone over to a fixed camera. And I'm, by the looks of things, I'm making the Goodrich hoses because uh, the taller bars needed longer hoses. I'm using a Goodrich kit which allows you to cut the stainless steel braided hose to length and actually screw the fittings on. It's a little bit more expensive way of doing it than actually having a um, swaging machine but it's a lot cheaper and for the amount of cables I, I have to make it, it works out cheaper. That's me putting on the glasses because obviously my eyes are utterly yeah. destroyed. Pull the braiding back, put the nut on 30 first. years of welding. And pull back the braiding. Plasma cutting. Grinder dust like in my eyes. Like a mushroom. All the usual and tricks. Push the barrel in. So what you basically do 
which you can't really see here. I think I do show it a little bit later. But what you actually do is you, you, see that you the get the, you cut, right the you cut the Goodrich hose off mark, and then you push you you put the um, nut on the Goodrich nut on, and then you sort of hollow out between the PTFE insert which is what I'm doing now I believe with a screwdriver you sort of hollow it out so that you you press the braiding back slightly and flare it out and then you press on the ferrule and you can see I was just hitting it with a piece of wood I'm knocking the ferrule onto the PTFE tube and when you've got that when you can actually see the ferrule when you can actually see the PTFE tube right up against the front of the ferrule then you know that the nipple is incorrectly and then you should push the the um the goodrich fitting in and then tighten up the nut which i'm obviously i'm coming along there with the looks like i've got a um an all and an, a ring there mine's gone blank i can't think what it's called So what I'm doing is tightening it, basically tightening it on. In fact, I think I'm just using an old one there to just compress the ferrule a little bit so that I can then take it off and put it onto the bike's fitting because the, 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 um, the actual nut is still on the bike because there's a piece of copper hose that takes it down to the slave cylinder because I'm in the process of doing the clutch by the looks of things. I can remember how I passed it through the frame because you've got to get the, the you've actually got one. to get the new piece of tube. Once that I'll one's done, because he's chatting. Just done that one. Once this one's done, that will be. And then I can read them, read them out, and put everything back together. So what you've got to do is you've got to put the new piece of tube through the frame and you can do it by taking all the frame to bits and that's the difficult way but idea, how yeah. I did it was I just put a Join piece of what that was all about but never mind anyway um, yeah you put a piece of I, I put a piece of aluminium welding rod I, I pushed it very carefully into the PTFE tube and into the PTFE tube of the of the new brake fitting that I was putting in and then I put a little bit of masking tape around it to hold the two together and then pushed and pulled and fed it through the original cable guide where it goes because it, it's a bit awkward on the intruder it goes underneath it goes from the top of the tank oh, from the uh, from underneath the tank idea. It goes through under the headstock, and because there's two metal plates on the front, and the, the tube, the down tube is double, is like a double down tube. It goes underneath and through and out through a little cable guide, and that's how I managed to do it. And they were all hitting 125 mile an hour on the motorway. I'll leave Big Nose to talk to you now. I was like hanging, literally wind trying to pick me off the back of the bike every time I went past a coach I nearly fell off. That was awful. As soon as I came home I put flat bars on. Sold the bike. Oh bugger me he's going fast now. knocking the ferrule in again oh, if I could only move that fast in real life
I, I'm bleeding the brake, obviously, at the moment. I've discovered with the intruders, if you can't get a good brake, if you can't bleed the brake out well, the first thing you need to do is, once you've bled it through and you're convinced that you've got good fluid through, just leave it overnight with the with the hand with the um, lever pulled back to the handle grip and zip tied. Nine times out of ten, that will sort it out. If it doesn't, if you've still got excessive movement, what you'll probably find is that one of the pistons is sticking, and you need to take the what's big nose up to now. Oh no, getting the rubber, the rubber to go onto the uh, master cylinder. This is a bit awkward because you can't you can't turn the master cylinder around because the wires are in the way, the switch gear wires are in the way. So what you've got to do is, it's all right that way, doing the, doing the uh, brake one, because you can see how the handlebars are, are leaning and it's making the, mas the master cylinder straight. But you watch this side, when I try to do this side, I can't get the master cylinder up straight. So here we go. I now have to I now have to prop it up on a battery on one side and a piece of wood on the other side just to get the master cylinder level but at the moment as you can see it's confusing the fuck out of me. Got to process this information before we can move on. Scratch the head, lift the glasses. Come back with a hammer. That's looking ominous. Oh, that's another little trick. Yeah, that's another. I realise what I'm doing now. I'm not so stupid. What that is is the uh, the screws won't undo. There's two things you can do there. You can either you can either tap a screwdriver into them because the the shock will sometimes undo them. I, I, I'm not a fan of talk of. Um, impact drivers. It was in there somewhere. I'm not a fan of impact drivers. I, I just think they do unnecessary damage. If you can't, I've got metal top screwdrivers. If you can't just give it a little shock with a metal top screwdriver and undo it, then the best way to go about it is go and get a dot punch and actually tap a dot, dot punch straight, straight down so it makes a little dent into the screw and then incline it in the direction that you want to undo it and then tap it round and that will usually get it to free up. You really don't want to start trying to drill master cylinder screws out because you'll just get in a world of hurt. They will go, they, nine times out of ten, I, I don't think I've ever failed to get one to undo. obligatory back of the head shot um, just really done to show that I've still got my own air
clearly I'm doing something, but I've no clue as to what it is because the camera's behind me, so I don't know, I'm putting a bigger jet in the carb or something, who knows. I may have actually, it's possible that I've discovered a ground owl stuck up in under the back mudguard and I'm attempting to remove it using force. At this stage I can safely say that I've forgotten that I'm filming because I'm just showing the back of my head. Ooh. No, I've dropped a screw. I know what I'm doing. I'm bleeding the clutch. Well, taking the clutch panel off to bleed it. Definitely a lot of screwing going on in the bike's nether regions. I, I can only imagine that I'm undoing the... or doing it back up. I don't know. I missed something. One thing I can say for certain is my knees will be aching by now because I'm actually just kneeling on the floor without even a kneeling mat underneath me, so yeah. Here we go. This is where I'm realising that I cannot actually put any fluid into that clutch reservoir because it's just going to piss out all over my feet. that one through for a minute wander off leave the camera idly twiddling its thumbs get my hose out on the street, pick up my hose. It's like watching paint dry. No wonder my videos aren't monetized. Sucking out the, the old fluid. I don't want to put the old fluid back through it again. So we'll suck all the old fluid out. In with the toilet duck. Well, joking aside, toilet duck bottle does make an extremely good brake fluid dispenser. You don't end up spilling it everywhere. Yeah, top tip. You don't get that on Andy Mechanic. Although you do get 
women with big tits. I think I might be going for a wee right now. That or I'm hitting up the brake reservoir. Ass. What has happened to my ass? My ass has left home and moved up to the middle of my stomach. Side, the bike's got to be led over the other way, so I put it on the battery. Just watch you don't short out the terminals. Thinking definitely takes me a lot longer than it used to. Since I passed the age of 50, I just, I need to stop and use all my energy to think. Look around. Grab the battery. Especially in hammers, bigger hammer, smaller problem. Always works. Saggy ass again. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna sew up the middle of my jeans. Always put the reservoir cap on when you bleed the brakes because otherwise you risk spraying hydraulic fluid everywhere, which is not a great plan. What I find the best thing with a clutch when you're bleeding the clutch, sometimes, especially with an older clutch, it's it's a wise move to take the slave cylinder out and actually put a G around it to hold it in because otherwise when you squeeze the lever the slave cylinder comes out and if you then squeeze it again before the slave cylinder is settled back you can end up trapping air in them and then you can't get the air out no matter how hard you try but what I found the best thing to do is as you can see there I'm actually bleeding it slowly, actually squeezing the opposite of what you do with a brake, actually squeezing it slowly so that it's got time to retract each time. And when you finish bleeding it, again, zip tie it back to the bars, leave it overnight. Any residual air that's in there will come out. I do a lot of linked brake conversions using um, remote servos and they are a pig to bleed and I find that even when you've reverse bleed, bled them, even when you've bled them with the engine running or you've, or you've bled them with a suction apparatus, it's still best to leave the, the lever zip tied 
or if it's the foot brake, put a weight on it to pull it down and leave it overnight or even a few days sometimes and it will sort itself out. Here we go, you want to get that, the reservoir wants to be as level as you can possibly get it so that you can get a good volume of hydraulic fluid in because the thing is if you just um, because they're not they're, they're not like self level they're not cast level when they're on pullbacks or bars that go lower the actual usable fluid level in the reservoir can be quite low so it's always best if you get it get the reservoir as level as possible when you fill it up and then put the the seal back in and tighten it down and then it will be fine and it just gives you a lot more fluid in the reservoir You can't really see what I'm doing here, but what I'm what I'm doing is screwing the tank mounting back on. I've taken the tank mounting off because you need to take it off to get to the um, throttle linkage, the um, the joiner cable. So I'm just basically putting it back on. It's held on by four Phillips screws, and uh, that's, it's just putting them back into position so that I can slide the tank back on.
Go and get the tank. Looks like I'm lost. I've lost something for sure. Oh, now where did I leave that tank? Nope, put it back down again. Wander about. The joys of an untidy garage. I know what I'm looking for. WT40. Nope, pick the tank up again. Look around. Stand idly for a while while my brain clicks back in. <laughs> Can we go and put it down again? No, I'm picking up the WD-40. Here we go. Give the rubber a bit of a spray of WD-40. It just allows the tank to slide in. Because if you put the tank in dry, if you put the tank into its rubber dry, it doesn't always go all the way forward. So I always like to put a little bit of duck oil or WD-40 on it to begin with. And then I like to standing I like to stand around looking like I don't know what I'm doing. Here we go, getting ready, getting ready to put the uh, petrol hoses back on. Make sure when you take the tank off, you either lay your petrol hoses where you took them off or you label them left and right. Because if you get those the wrong way round, you will have your base on reserve when you think you're on. I don't know where he's going. He's, he's gone off again. He's, he's in a world of his own half the time. Pretty gone to make himself a cup of tea. Sometimes I'm embarrassed to be related to that bloke. I think I might stop the video here because I think he's probably gone for a poo. Here he comes. See how lively his step is. Oh yeah, look, he's standing up right now. He's definitely. Actually, I think I may have actually gone to check which way around the pipes go. It's in the workshop manual. I, I would tell you now, but I can't remember. I think that's about it for this video. I think it's just a case of uh, refitting the tank and putting the seat back on and that's the job pretty much finished that's the handlebars functioning so it's sayonara for now i think Auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss.